Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday, it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today I want to talk about the top 5 reasons I use Peppermint. So Peppermint does not run on my main system, but it runs on my writing computer, my Linux-based writing computer. I have two of those as well. Um, and uh, I chose to use Peppermint on there because of five of the reasons here we're talking about. Actually, I, I use kind of four of these five reasons, but there's a fifth reason in there as well. Um, so uh, we're going to kind of jump into this uh, first with a brief introduction of Peppermint in case you are not aware of it. And I brought uh, this came up because they just did release another um, another minor release to Peppermint 8 today, and this is an excellent distro. So if you come over here to Peppermint's website, peppermintos.com, we have a 32 and a 64-bit version. They have a very nice, easy to see user's guide, how to install it, etc. Um, over here, they have uh, where it's based out of. So uh, this is based on, um, I guess it's LXDE. Um, and uh, I thought it was XFCE, but I think it's LXDE. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, uh, it is a very lightweight system based on with, with a lot of elements from Ubuntu, based on Debian, and uh, also several of the elements from Linux Mint. So it's kind of an amalgam of all of those that lends itself to be a really good, uh, really good system. Number one, the Peppermint desktop is extremely lightweight. So uh, here we're running the Peppermint desktop and we're running this in a virtual box. You can see it's running on 278 megabytes of RAM right now. That is an excellent amount of RAM for the fact that my computer has two gigs of RAM in it. And so it runs uh, very well. Now, of course, this particular virtual box has four cores. I think the one that I have is maybe two cores. It's, it's either one or two cores. I can't remember what processor I have in that system. But you'll see that uh, even if you only have two gigs of RAM in 2018, uh, 278 megabytes of RAM being used by the system means that this is a super lightweight um, computer to be running. Number two, a very simple update system. So very much like your, uh, very much like your Linux Mint, the update system on Peppermint will give you a variety of update options. So if you check the, uh, check out the little shield at the bottom of the screen down here, uh, you'll see that it has a variety of updates here. So these will be uh, these will be scheduled in level one through level five. One, two, and three are generally perfectly safe to update at any time. Four and five are a little bit more either untested or may mess up some configurations in your system. So you can see here there's some grub adjustments. On my main computer, I generally don't update grub stuff because it tends to mess with my bootloaders. Um, so you can actually do that. You also have the option inside of your preferences to either view or optionally select or deselect by default the various updates of different sizes. So you can see what those various updates happen to be. Here's um, packages you want to ignore, uh, various icons that you can set, things like that. The other thing that this does great is it will isolate out your kernel updates. So if you hit your Linux kernels here, uh, you'll see that you can update your kernels and a separate option than updating your software. This is very important because sometimes the kernel, um, you will break the system if you update it. And uh, if you don't have a specific reason to, maybe there's a big security update you want to update your kernel, or if you're adding new hardware that's not supported by previous kernel, you might update your kernel. But I like the fact that it does not force you to update your kernel uh, just because there's a new, a new version out there. So you have these options, and that uh, the options are the things that I like the most. Number three, ICE applications. So the ICE applications inside of Peppermint are uh, sort of like a response that, that Peppermint was really designed in response to the Chromebooks. So what your Chromebooks, uh, basically they're just web-enabled devices that use a series of apps or other app-like things to access web resources. So in Peppermint, you actually have the ability to have these ICE applications. So to show you how some of these work, uh, under all these guys here under Google, so for example, if I click Google Drive, this is an ICE application. 
So what it's actually doing is it's grabbing a website and putting this inside of a container without any URL bars, back buttons, forward buttons, or any of the other options inside of your web browser. So you can run this particular website as a specific application. So the way this works is come into your internet and hit ICE, and this is your ICE manager. You have a variety of ICE applications built by default. And so with all of these guys, you can actually just grab these and delete them. To create one, you give it an application name, give it an application um, URL, and then you can select where you want it to appear in your menu, and then you can either select an icon or you can use the site favicon. So the ICE technology works with Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, or Firefox, and uh, which one of these, you know, all of these will be selected based on which browsers you have installed. This system only has Chromium installed by default, and so Chromium is the only option. But you can run them in a container of any of those browsers if you want to. So that is your ICE applications. Number four. By default, we only have core applications and settings uh, built into the system by default. A lot of this is to show off the ICE applications and what they can do. But if you go back through, um, you'll see that we have core tools, which I like the fact we have all of these core tools and accessories, calendars, archive managers, etc. Those are things that I like to see. But if you look through everything else, everything else that's in here uh, essentially are... Um, uh, ICE applications. There's a few exceptions like the BitTorrent client, Chromium. I think Dropbox is probably um, an application. Uh, Document Viewer and Simple Scanner built in, but these two here are web are ICE applications. I think. Don't quote me exactly. You'll see we do not have LibreOffice installed by default. It does give you the Google suite of stuff. Um, some of us uh, Linux folks wonder that, but anyway, it's there. And then sound and video, all of our uh, all of our sound and video is all controlled by VLC instead of having a separate one like many distros do. And then this will allow us to select the applications that we want. But regardless, you have uh, very nice core applications and settings, including um, including your own Peppermint uh, settings panel, uh, a Peppermint control panel, a link to the forum specifically, an online user's guide, which is probably set up as an ICE application. Number five is we have excellent package support everywhere else. So the thing does have uh, very few packages installed by default. A lot of this is to show off the ICE applications. We do have a lot of the basic accessories and things that I like to see inside of a distro. You know, your archive manager, calculator, disk utilities, files, image viewers, things like that so that you can run the system nicely. Uh, but if you look at a lot of everything else installed, uh, what you're seeing is a lot of these are ICE applications. There's a few exceptions, of course, uh, but with our ICE applications, um, it allows you to have very few actual applications installed by default, and this is going to allow you uh, to uh, allow you to install the applications that you want. So, as far as your options, we have a basic software manager. We have a Synaptic package manager as well. So, inside of our uh, software manager here, we're going to pull that up. See what's inside of there. Uh, we have the uh, basically the same software manager that you had inside of your um, uh, inside of Linux Mint. It is still the older version of the Linux Mint package manager, which is uh, that one has definitely been improved, and it'll be really cool to see if in Peppermint Nine, if they keep the Linux Mint theme, if they go with the uh, the newer package manager, is a quite a bit better. Uh, but regardless, you can uh, come in here and install the packages you want. So again, on my writing system. Um, I install the full of uh, LibreOffice so that I can uh, do anything that I need to do inside of there. Of course, I have GIMP installed for doing my edits. Um, I also do, um, if I can remember how to spell, Calibri. I install Calibri and Sigil uh, to do my ebook management. Uh, so I have the ability to write my ebooks in there as well. And then, you know, of course, there's a variety of, uh, of other tools you can install. Anything you can find inside of the Ubuntu, the Linux Mint, or the Debian world, you're probably able to install. I want to see if Simple Screen Recorder is installed. So, yeah, you can even grab Simple Screen Recorder without having the PPAs. Let's see if OBS is in here. Looks like OBS is probably not in here. Let's, oh, no, it is. Look at that. 
there is OBS in there as well. So you do have a lot of software choices, a lot of a lot of things like that that are, that are very handy. Those are the five reasons why I choose to use Peppermint for my writing computer for a smaller computer, lower processing power, lower RAM. This thing runs just as well as any other higher end computer I actually have. It runs perfectly running Peppermint and that is why I use Peppermint for my smaller and my writing computers. That's my go-to choice for any lightweight system, uh, computer system that you might need. Need, uh, need to have. So thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to help support what we're doing, check out switch to linux.com forward slash support. We do have Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there's some Amazon affiliate links down below. If you shop on Amazon, that's a good way to help support this channel without actually paying anything additional. Uh, Amazon will give a small percentage of that sale to anything that you buy if you use that affiliate link. So thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.